Hey, good morning. Uh, welcome into Winging It Wednesday, brought to you by Service Cadillac at 1212 and 1214. Ambassador Caffrey, uh, just near the interstate, huge selection of Cadillacs, of Chevrolets, and there's even the wash over there, because it is Wash It Up Wednesday as well. So, you know, the rain looks like it might hold off. We know you cars are probably dusty and dirty. Go ahead, go get your car uh, cleaned at the wash. Uh, good morning to our, our Wing It Wednesday panelists, Warren Cottle and Carol Ross. Good morning. And How good are morning. You? Good. Um, okay, so lots going on. Let's let's start with the House, um, or excuse me, the Senate health care vote. Uh, it was delayed yesterday. I want to play this quick uh, sound bite from Catherine, H- I mean, um, um, Susan, Susan Collins. Susan Collins. Yes, of, uh, <laughs> the, of Maine. The loons. The um, loons are in the Senate, yes. Um, <laughs> Susan Collins seems to be the leader of the Republican resistance to this. And guess what? She got a seat in the place of honor next to the president yesterday at the meeting at the White House. I'm sure that is no coincidence. Listen to what she had to say yesterday before getting on the big Capitol Police bus to go over to the White House. This president is the first president in our history who has had neither political nor military experience. And thus, it has been a challenge to him to learn how to interact with Congress <laughs> and how to push his agenda forward. I also believe it would have been better had the president started with infrastructure, which has bipartisan support, rather than tackling a politically divisive and technically complex issue like health care. Oh, please, enough. So, you know, I mean... <laughs> please, no more. Please make it go away. The problem with that was everything that Trump promised is going to be technically complex and divisive. Yes, of course. He was trying to... He wants to change a lot of things. You you think that immigration is going to be easy? No. Health care is not going to be easy. Getting rid of lobbyists, not going to be easy. I mean, I don't know. I mean... What do you put, what do you put that start? last one first? What do you because want to if you look on? at the headlines in the Wall Street Journal, uh, the insurance companies are very worried that the mandates are going to go away. Mm-hmm. They're very worried about that. So you look at who's lining up and whose stocks went up when this bill, you know, when they pulled the bill back off the calendar. Uh, man, I tell you what, I, I'm sick of all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I've got to tell you, I, I never thought I would say this, but I'm sick of all of them because. Uh, you know, for just just one day, people at one, every level of government, just one day, could you stop acting like a bunch of selfish kids and look at the big picture and let's get this thing fixed, including the budget structure here in Louisiana and in Washington, yeah. D.C. I mean, it, it, you have so many special interest groups and so many little uh, little special favors dropped in all over all the legislation that comes out of Washington. Everybody's got skin in the game except us. The yeah. rest of us out here in flyover country who are getting screwed by all of this. Oh, man. I'm going to take a deep breath. I haven't even had any caffeine take, this morning. <laughs> take your deep breath. <laughs> you know, I'm Warren, I have to imagine that Paul Ryan is sitting uh, across town um, wearing, like, some basketball shorts and a T-shirt with popcorn and a beer watching this thing play out because I think the Senate <sighs> thought, we're going to get this done. Mitch McConnell thought this was going to happen. And now, uh, you know, a delay after... You had a lot of people come out and say, we don't think we're ready to vote on this quite yet. Why did you have to bring Paul Ryan's name up this early in the morning? <laughs> you know, when you bring his... perfectly good. He's with not that bad. When, you, when, you, when you bring his name up, the only thing <laughs> I can see is his Hillary Clinton supporting fundraising wife. The big liberal Democrat out there who run, you know, I can just, you know, when you mention him and his shorts, I can just mention, <laughs> I can just see her standing behind him and she's got a grip on him. And she said, don't you move. And Paul says, yes, dear. You know, I, anyway, enough of that. Yeah, really? Move, Where'd that come let's from? Move on, let's move on to what we're talking about. You know, I think that uh, Susan Collins just really, really just got through telling exactly what those politicians are. They're gutless, they're spineless, and um, they are BS artists who got there because they, they, most of them, they got the right picture, they got the right looks, they got the right image, and they got the right BS about them, and they go out there, and then when it comes down to it, they don't know a damn thing about what's going on in the real world. Mm. You know, and, and so they get up there, and now she talks about these things or or technically difficult and divisive and divi- what the hell do you think you're up there for 
You're up there to, to, to solve some problems. You know, there are no simple problems. You know, a lot of problems do have simple solutions, but stupid people like what we've got in Washington can't seem to understand that. You know, and they can't seem to do what that old book said one time, everything I really need to know I learned in kindergarten or whatever it was, you know, where we were talking about share things, play together, you know, don't 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 steal your neighbor's lunch, yeah. you know, don't stick the girl in front of you with a sharp pencil and all that stuff. You know, <laughs> Did you do that, Warren? To, they seem to forget <laughs> those that things. <laughs> they seem to forget those things, you know. It's, it's like we live in the same world. We got problems to take care of. Let's get rid of the problems. Let's at least try to solve them. But the only thing they can think of up there, I'm talking about the Washington establishment, the only yeah. thing they can think of it's is Trump's how are we going to come back with this? How are we going to challenge that? We can't, you know, you know. And so here comes a man like Donald Trump says, "All right, let's solve a problem." Mm -hmm. Just like it was with the ice skating rink in Central Park in New York years ago when the thing was like 7 years over budget and about 400 times over price. And it was still nowhere in sight to be finished. It was going to be finished in two years. He said, I can do it in, in one year and blah, blah, blah. And it wound up, you know, they finally let him do it. Mm -hmm. And he said, if I don't get it done in the X amount of time, I'll pay for it myself. Is there any part of either one of you, and we'll move on to the next topic, um, that thinks maybe a role for Trump in a cabinet position where he can really have effective change in a specific department? I feel like he's just so embattled with stupid things as president on himself personally, you know, would he be better as a no. commerce secretary? No, as a, no, no, absolutely no, not. No, no. Okay. they'll no. never no, let it. it no, they'll, no, they'll no. stick him back in a closet somewhere no, as I mean, a commerce if, secretary. If he wouldn't have been elected president. Would he have been? No, they, no, no, they'll marginalize no. him just like they do everybody else. The only reason that Trump is having any kind of impact is because he's larger than life. He had a persona. He had a following before he even got into politics. And it's so instructive, you know, for her to say, well, he wasn't in the military and he didn't serve in Congress, so he doesn't understand things. You're darn right he doesn't understand. He doesn't understand the logjam, the absolute inertia up there because they're all jockeying for contributions from certain special interest groups. I, there's nobody who is more pro-business than me, but what they've got going on up there, that is not business. That's cronyism, pure and simple. You want to put down on the Russian oligarchs? They're not any better. All right, Warren. I'm prone up. to go back to the dark ages a lot of time on this stuff, but <laughs> I want to go back to one of the presidents who was in Congress, who was in the Senate, and he was in the military during World War II. And when he became president, his name was Richard Nixon, and he laid out some, some orders for the, the cabinet to do. And uh, one of them, one of the cabinet secretaries said, well, Mr. President, they're not going to do it. And he said, what do you mean they're not going to do it? I'm the president. And you're the secretary. You tell them to do it. And he said, well, it's not the way it works. They're just not going to do it. And said Nixon, wow. Nixon uh, came out with one of his famous expertise and said, well, I'm the president. And, uh, you know, and so it, 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 but, you know, it is a swamp. All right. We'll continue next. Uh, to talk about Syria and fears that they could be prepping for another chemical attack on their own people. Uh, what is the U.S. role in this? We'll talk to the panelists next. Coffee time. Welcome back to Winging It Wednesday on Acadiana's Morning News, brought to you by Service Cadillac here. Uh, looks like it is beautiful outside, just a little bit of, uh, just a little bit of clouds out there and uh, calling for a good day. From Eric Zernick over at the Storm Team 3 Weather Lab. Let's turn to Syria. And I think uh, sometimes, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but, you know, in addition to reading from the multiple different sources that we have here in the United States, I love to see how the world writes about us. You know, I mean, either they don't have skin in the game or maybe they understand it at such a basic level, you might get a little bit from it. So this morning on BBC... Uh, there is an article that says the White House has said it believes the Syrian government is planning a chemical weapons attack and warned Bashar al-Assad uh, that his re regime will pay a heavy price if it does so. Now, it's the second line that's interesting. Several U.S. defense officials at the White House and the State Department say they are not familiar of this intelligence that informed the statement and that a cruise missile has already been fired. Okay. The president obviously gets his own intelligent briefings every day. The White House has been uh, pretty pretty serious on this, and I don't think it would even be surprising to anyone if Syria was planning another attack. They they seem to be pretty crazy. Um, Warren, what is our role in this, and 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 do you think we should listen to different intelligence sources like that? 
I think the key uh, the key point is that question: What is our role in this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm waiting for anybody to tell me definitively what our role actually is and why we should have that role. I think what we should do is that we should pick up the phone, call uh, Vladimir Putin, and say, "Look, who's doing this? Because they got better intelligence over there than we do." And say, "Who's doing this? Are they going to do it? Why don't you stop them?" And look, listen, here's the big deal. Who's our friend? Who's our enemy? Nobody knows. Only thing I know is this. ISIS' number one enemy is Iran, is the Shia Muslims, which Iraq is, is predominantly Shia. Saddam Hussein was Sunni, but he pretty well kept all of them in line and whatever, you know, by hook and crook and, and brutal force but certainly didn't kill one one-thousandth as many has been murdered since we took went over there to maintain peace and order. Now look at it. So you're turning around there, so on the one hand, we're saying that, that our arch enemy over there are the Shias and, and the, uh, what was that guy, the black turban guy over there in Iraq and all that, uh, whatever, whatever his name was. Muqtada al uh, uh, I think so, yeah. That was our big, big enemy and all that. So, so who is his enemy? Well, we started funding his enemy, and we started arming them, and we were giving them anything they wanted. And then one day they changed their name from being the rebels to being the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, of ISIS. So then you turn around, and with the chemical attacks, they never have proven who did the chemical attacks. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, they don't know if it was if it was actually the Syrian army who did it or if it was the ISIS group who did it or if it was the Al Qaeda group who did it under the guise of that group. You know, they can't tell us that. They don't know. And it, I go back to the world famous 2001-2002 uh, lead up to the Iraq war. You know, the uh the aluminum tubes, the whatever that stuff was, the yellow cake and all of that, you know, the uh the wonderful world of Dick Cheney and his, his uh, intelligence that t- it turns out was just totally manufactured. You know, we talk about fake news from CNN. We had fake intelligence from the intelligence community primarily driven by Richard B. Cheney. And so now you tell me, is it, you know, is it real or is the old commercial used to be, is it real or is it Memorex? And I don't know, but I'll tell you what I would do if I was Donald J. Trump. Yes. I would defer to the only person in Washington that I trust on these matters, and that is General Mad Dog Maddox. All right, Carol. I think he has already done that, and I think that's very wise that he has done that. Um, I will say this. Vladimir Putin is just sitting back and just chuckling at everything that he's got. To, assume, to think, to even imagine that we would get a straight answer out of Vladimir Putin is 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 quite interesting. I, that will never happen. He has other interests in that area, and they 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 are not ours. His interest is in keeping Bashar al-Assad in power and the Iranians. That's a that's one little axis of evil that uh, that is not going to go away anytime soon. Iran and Syria and Russia. You know so. Um, he wants to have that uh, position over there. He he is positioning himself as the leader in that area. That that's all well and good with me because I think it's a total nightmare over there anyway. And when Trump campaigned, he he understood the treasure that we were spending over there. However, I think he now understands that we do have to do something about the Islamic State and their goal of a worldwide caliphate, and it's a problem. So he has to do something. What he does, I don't know, because it is an, it's, it's a hot mess. But, uh, but I would trust, I agree with uh, Warren about that. I would trust Mattis. Um, there are so many players over there that, that you cannot trust. And by the way, I mean, the fact that, uh, that there's been intelligence since then that the chemical weapons, it mostly was chemical weapons that Saddam Hussein used on his own people, yeah. the Kurds, and then shipped, according to some sources, uh, the declassified information out of Russia was shipped to Syria. They disguised it as milk trucks yeah. and that it went to Assad in Syria. So there's really no way of knowing how much he has. There, the, the stuff was dropped from the air. The rebels so far do not have air power, yeah. but that, that's so what far. the... Inter- so far. Wow. So far. Right. 
and you know it just there's just so much going on there i mean i I think it's it's a matter of who you talk to and i, I don't know just well i can tell you this just watching parts. the putin interviews by oliver stone yeah. i have i do not trust oliver Stone, but he couldn't have edited these down that much uh-huh. And uh and and you know Putin is just sitting there smirking. I mean, he's just having a great time. Warren. I just want to say one thing and that is that uh when Carol's talking about you can't trust Putin and whatever they tell you and they have an agenda and all that, you could just substitute the word Putin for the uh for the establishment in Washington DC and it's just going to overlay completely. You know, you can't trust what they're going to say. They have an agenda, you know, and, and so I mean, it, it, and what she said is exactly it is a mess. Yeah. Hey, let's take one phone call before we wrap up this segment. Oh, not there. We didn't get to you fast enough. Hey, call back in the break and we'll get you lined up. Hey, Wing and Wednesday brought to you every week by Service Cadillac. Shop online now, CadillacAtService.com. Relax and enjoy the difference at Service Cadillac. Look, it's right there in the name, the Cadillac CTS, my personal favorite. If you're feeling a little adventurous, the CTS-V has that big motor in it. <laughs> really fast just bragging and bragging um, and bragging hey we don't have too many cold <laughs> mornings here in louisiana but when you do you can turn your steering wheel heater on it's just great steering wheel heater talk about that you huge. know what i have a word for you today sybarite you're a sybarite <laughs> that's what panoramic you are panoramic sunroof oh by the way and if you're driving towards the east and the sun's setting behind you and you can't see it's a nice little shade you can press that'll block that glare in the back <laughs> Hey, go take a look and see what they have over at Service Cadillac. Dean, Rhonda, and the rest of the crew over there ready to help you. Hey, just go for some popcorn and some bottled water. It's going to be a hot day. Go see that beautiful showroom, 1212 Ambassador Caffrey. And it is Wash It Up Wednesday right there on the lot. The Wash, the premier car wash in Acadiana. Trust me, no bug on your windshield, on your bumper has a chance. In your grill, none of them have a chance over at The Wash. 1212 Ambassador Caffrey and 1214 Ambassador Caffrey near I-10 between Cajun Field and the Interstate at 734. We're back with more Winging It Wednesday next. All right, it's 739 here. Just some breaking news into the KPL newsroom here uh, regarding uh, that uh, really horrific mugging we saw caught on video in the New Orleans area. Brandon, what's the update this morning? Yes, yeah, so all... Excuse me. All four suspects in the brutal French Quarter attack, um, they are all in custody, according to the New Orleans Police Department. Uh, it left one person in critical condition, uh, as you said, caught on surveillance video. And uh, the suspects busted this morning, identified as 20-year-old Rashad Piper, 18-year-old Nicholas Polgalski, 21-year-old Dewan Paul, and 18-year-old Joshua Simmons. So Dewan Paul, that was the story that came out late last night. He actually... Uh, got away, went to his pastor, admitted to doing it, and the pastor said, you turn yourself in or I will turn you in. There you go, a, religi- a religious mugger. What the heck? Who I mean, knew? come on. Um, you know, it, it's kind of weird because... <laughs> and by the way, now that, all the, now, now that all the statues are gone, I'm so glad the crime has gone away in New Orleans. Gosh. Everything is solved. The statues are gone. Life is beautiful in New Orleans. Pothole Everybody effect. can be reassured. It is so, you know, it's unfortunate because even with the crowds, people used to you know, ask me when I didn't live here, hey, you know, are we going to be safe there? And my answer would always be an emphatic, yes, don't go in the alleys. Don't, you know, stay on the main streets, stay wherever. You're seeing more and more of this stuff happening. I mean, where where you're hearing like at a cross street, like a canal and camp. Um, Let me think. When did it start going up in the, because the quarter was the one area that was always protected because of the tourists, right? Mm -hmm. But then they pulled the state police out. Would that have something to do with it? Mm. That it's just New Orleans police that are protecting the quarter? Warren, what are your thoughts on all this? My real thoughts on it, same thing that happened in Las Vegas. I was in Las Vegas a few years ago, and, and a guy was talking about the, the bus driver was on the bus going down the strip, and he said, if you're standing up, watch your wallet. He said, I hate to say this, but we do have criminals in Vegas, the pickpockets, and blah, blah, blah. So then I'm in a cab, and I said something to the cab driver. The cab said, driver said, yep. You know what? He said, back in the old days when the mob ran the town, mm-hmm. he said there was law and order. He said, you know, the kids would get into a fight. He said they didn't get arrested and hauled to jail and, you know, and booked and have a record. He said what they did, they took one of them out on the north side about five miles out in the desert and turned them loose, and the other one out on the south side about five miles out in the desert and turned him loose and said, now make his way back to town. When they got back to town, they decided they are going to be good boys. And he said then when the do-gooders came in, he said the mob left. He said do-gooders came in. They were going to get rid of the prostitutes. There was out. There. He said, "Huh? 
have you gone out there now? He said, how many of them do you see? They're out there handing out like baseball cards, yep. you know. They've got, got everything. They flick you know. them. They flick the baseball cards. Absolutely. And then you turn around and over in New Orleans, back when old Carlos Marcelo's family ran New Orleans, it was pretty calm, you know. And so then when, when they got pushed out of power and the next group came in called the New Orleans Police Department, which we don't even need to go into that, mm-hmm. then that's mm-hmm. when your crime just exploded exponentially. What, you know, we... Keep seeing these, we keep seeing these ridiculous, like you know, pronouncements about you know Mitch Landrew being named to this commission, and you know what is he? I think he is it home. Is it home? No, that was our that was our governor. No, Mitch Landrew was named to something last week in in D.C. As far as mayor, sure go. he was. He fits right in you up know, there. And it and you know you <laughs> went up have there ask, and said we're a sanctuary city, so you, there. I have had. And to by ask, the way, if they get into his personal life, yeah, I've had to ask ever since he became mayor. <laughs> Mm, that's all I have to say about where you know the same thing that we had with Jindal, <laughs> where the question was the whole the whole last term of Jindal was was are you using this a vehicle for something else, as a vehicle for something else? Fix the problems here. Are we having the same situation with Landrew? <laughs> I don't even know how to answer that. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's I mean, the first time I saw you speechless. Does girl. he really <laughs> even care? It's all I'm asking. Does he care? You know what? Stop you thinking know, about any... Mitch Landrew's personal life, no. Carol. Come back into the studio. <laughs> Welcome back, Carol. Now, let me tell you something. Mitch, <laughs> Mitch Landrew and any other politician from Louisiana who thinks he has a, a, a standing on the, on the national stage. Yeah. Excuse me. We keep... We keep losing population, so we lose congressmen. How much clout do you think we have on the national stage? How, you know, really, come yeah. on. What a joke. Of course, then there was Bill Clinton, and they were desperate at the time. They didn't think anybody could beat, uh, you know, uh, Bush. Yeah. And they put up Bill Clinton. He was kind of like the, the candidate by default. Will that happen here? I don't know, but I don't know. I don't think so. Okay. He's not the politician that Bill Clinton is. Warren. Talking about the Louisiana politicians on the national stage, can I go back to the dark age just one more time, please? Oh, Warren, you come may, on. When you, had, when you had a young governor here who said that the 1992 presidential election was just a perfect year for a pro-business, moderate Democrat, to uh, Southern boy to go out there and do good and started laying his groundwork to run for governor in 1992, and that was Charles P. Buddy Romer. And it just turned out that the Louisiana didn't quite make the, the final stage, but Arkansas did. He had the right plan, but, it, it, you know, when it comes down to it, politicians in Louisiana are just looked at as being criminals, buffoons, and you name it. You know, and Bobby Jindal wore the crown for that. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know, then Mitch Landrieu's coming along. If he's going to be on the national stage, who is he playing to? He can't even he can't even win the Bernie Sanders uh, base. <laughs> By the, the way, Bernie. his wife may go to jail too <laughs> because, oh, of all her, because of all her hanky panky yeah, at so, the university. So the wife is under FBI investigation. Uh-huh. Bernie and, is too. And yeah, and he yeah. It, what, by just by association, right? To her. I don't know. I think it's it's, it's because they're doing it together. They, yeah, they, fun- they she funneled a, a lot of money to her family to and they, him and, took, and the daughter. They, I think they took a loan, right? And and for a now defunct college. Is that, do I understand that I think that right? there was a lot of things in there. Okay. They were they were playing almost like the money laundering game. Yeah, and they and misrepresented how many, how, many, how many donors they had in order to get loans. I believe that's what I it was. I believe that's right. It's kind of the same thing with the Clinton, the Clinton, what <laughs> they did over that. the years, the Clinton Foundation. Imagine that corruption I, has invaded academia, too. And an, mm-hmm. an, anonymous, uh, <laughs> <laughs> an, an anonymous comment into the Wing and Wednesday realm. Uh, same as everyone else, maybe named on a national level on a board of mayors, but will never win anything mm. election wise. Yep. We'll be back to wrap up Winging It Wednesday coming up. Board of Mayors. 750 on Wednesday, June 28th, 2017. Winging It Wednesday brought to you by Service Chevrolet Cadillac. Uh, you got to go over there and see what they have. Nice, nice people over there. Uh, so Carol, just before you started your show, <laughs> what? Mm-hmm. Carol, I'm just making you laugh. No, I'm thinking today. about I'm thinking about the Garth Brooks review that you did. They still have some tickets this weekend. The, yeah, huh? still yeah. Some tickets this weekend. Yeah. The last two shows. But let me tell you. Um, so we went on you know, opening night on the on the on Friday, um, and had a little one on one with Garth. He was really cool. I heard it. Just we ran it. We ran just it. Just as show. genuine as you would expect. Yeah. Just as I'm just kind of your regular guy. I loved his take on scalpers, okay? You realize their whole deal of your every ticket in the arena is the same price. That's one way to get them. 
And the other way is to, you know, if you got printable tickets, the mm-hmm. ones you can download, you couldn't download them until 48 hours before. And so, you know, I, I kind of gathered. And only was. Amazon. Only Amazon for the music. For the music. And so, you know, during that little press conference that we went to, um, Trisha Yearwood was kind of talking and explained, no, we like to we like to take away the the mad dash for tickets. So that mm-hmm. means if people feel like, you know, you don't have to have $500 a ticket to sit on the front row, then people, the people who really want to go are the ones who are sitting right there close to you. Yeah. And uh, anyway, it was just, just a really cool experience. So what are we talking about now? I mean, you're going to ask me something. <laughs> How did we get Bernie's off here. on this? Y'all are acting like the lifeguard's not at the pool and y'all could dive in into the three <laughs> feet of water. Anyway. Well, Brandon's just sitting over there. No, quiet and, and Brandon, mellow. And Brandon's going to just let me sink the ship. Okay. And then I'm going to turn to him and be like, what now, Brandon? He's All right. Say, we were going to talk out. about the very fake news, oh, well, CNN. Well, <laughs> okay. So we played a little uh, chunk this morning. A guy up in Shreveport, uh, Greg Adams, who does a talk show at the Town Square uh, station, our sister station up in Shreveport, saying, okay, let's just go tunnel vision on this. Let's not. Let's not take into account the last two years of what you think about CNN. Go tunnel vision on this specific situation. Three people, including a Pulitzer Prize winner who's worked there for 20 years, are gone because of this story. Bad story. Bad sourcing. Wasn't true. Closest thing to fake news that has probably happened. Good. Bad. Thumbs up. Thumbs down. All I can think of is Bohemian Rhapsody. Scott Amush. Scott Amush. It was Scott <laughs> Scaramucci, okay. the, sc- yeah, the guy who was Scaramucci, the guy who was Scaramucci. No, it's crazy, huh? The the word association. Yeah. But uh, th- th- this really points up, I think, a, a serious mm-hmm. serious problem in the national news, and I think that for the very reason that they took the cameras out of the briefing room, because what has it become? It has become a way for these reporters to make a name for themselves to get FaceTime to get the most outrageous questions out there so that they can get on the evening news, to get on YouTube and on the social media, to be quoted, uh, you know, to be Twitterized, to be what about, you know, tweeted about. It's, it says it's gotten ridiculous. It's not about the news anymore. So why have them at all then? Good question, yeah. but they'll go completely ape if, if, uh, I would say, I would either say I'm not having them at all, or if you don't like, you know, these networks that want to criticize what happens in the briefings, okay, stop sending your reporter. Well, exactly. But are you going to really walk away from the ratings? But as Britt Hume very yeah. wisely said, he said, if I have a real question that I'm really working on, he said, do you think I'm going to let the rest of those guys in the briefing room know oh, the it. serious story that I'm working yeah. on? He said, that's all political theater. And he said, the real stories are done in the hallways. You ask, you know, quietly, you yeah. get behind the scenes, you find out what you can find out. All this stuff is just political theater. Well, and Warren, the thing about anonymous sources, look, you know, we talked a little bit earlier this morning. People call this building all the time. Well, if you only have it one source, yeah. and that's what I tell them all the time. You give me two or three sources and exactly. give me some paper. Or give get me, me the document. That, give me someone that I can call myself. Yeah. You know, and, you know, I don't think that's ever going to truly go away. You wouldn't get any news out. I, uh, I go back. I know that you used to work at CNN. Yeah. And you have a, 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 a <laughs> deep, deep, deep good, place, a a good place in your heart and fond <laughs> memories from there. And, He's uh, been through the 12-step program, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He's about at step but, number nine. You know, I've got to <laughs> say that, that I totally gave up on CNN back when it became the Clinton News Network. Completely. Which was when? Oh, that was back when, sometime in the early 90s, the mid-90s, and totally gave up on them. And, and uh, they're so over the top. If if I was Donald Trump, I would just pull the White House credentials. I would just say, you know, you're not seeing anybody else up here. Go ahead and write all the stories you want to. You know, you said, why do we need the, the media anymore? You know, and that is the big thing they're criticizing now is social media and all these other things. And the reason they're criticizing it because social media is doing a better job of getting the news out than what the news media is supposed to be doing. Mm-hmm. And the news media has just become an agenda-run group. They've got an agenda, and, and they're out there just fabricating stories and all that stuff. You know, that they've always made mistakes. And well, all, you, know, thing, but, you do have to admit a little bit that even if you— Okay, so take out the medium, and you just have Trump and his direct pipeline to voters, to the, to the people, which is Twitter. There's a lot of inaccuracies in his tweets. There's a lot of things that can be disproven. So is there, it, should there be someone in the middle who sets that straight and says that's not exactly right? I mean, there, there is. But, you know, but the media is the one that's supposed to do that. 
You know, who's setting them straight? You know, it's yeah. it, 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 the whole, it, <laughs> no, you know, it, it, it's kind of a cabal. That, I mean, I still say that the Internet and that today that, you know, and that's what the media is all upset about is because you've got bloggers, you've got these people out Absolutely. there who are just writing what they think they want to write. What well, the hell are you, you doing? Want. You can pick the perspective you want. Really. That's right. And you can pick the people you want to read about, you know, the people you trust and all that. I mean, my God, who would trust CBS News anymore? People raise, do, raise, yeah. your, raise your hand, you know, and, and that I mean, there are some, and, yeah. but most of them is that the people who love the media are those the, the, that are driving their agenda, which is now the media has become the agenda driver for the Democrat Party or for the left. Good, no good question about it. As always, Winging It Wednesday, um, every Wednesday at 7. Take exhibit A, Cheryl Atkinson, a great investigative reporter. Mm-hmm. Yep. Tried to blow the whistle on the Obama administration. Look what happened to her. And now she has a place. She has a new she home. She has a place, but it's it's not CBS. It's not, it's not a major yeah. network. Look at Bill O'Reilly. Look at Bill. O- look at what they've yeah. done to trying to. They're trying to do to Fox News, and now they're threatening Jesse Waters because of some insipid little remark he made about the way Ivanka Trump holds a microphone, and there it's all over the Twitterverse. You know, yeah. we're going to get you next. We got Ailes and O'Reilly. Now we're going to get you. Yeah. Mm. All right, Winging It Wednesday. Hey, thanks, guys, for coming in. Have a great rest of your week. We'll see you next week. It's 7.57 now at News Talk 96.5 KPL.